today, we are in a, a, a series as a church over two years of anchoring ourselves up to the New Testament. We have been slowly walking over a two-year time period through the New Testament, and what we're doing is we're anchoring our souls and our spirits to the truth of God's Word, so you and I will know the truth of God's Word. And so you've picked a great season if you're just jumping in today because we're in the book of Ephesians. Joshua just kicked this teaching series off last week, but we got six weeks. We're really going to dig into the book of Ephesians. And so it's a great time for you to dig in and to journey with us. Not only that, this time of year brings so many great opportunities for you to engage in next steps. And maybe for you, your next step here at Hope Church is next steps. Next step is our discipleship process. You say, what does it mean, discipleship? A disciple of Jesus is someone who is following Jesus, growing with Jesus, and living for Jesus. We rip the mission of our church straight out of the Bible, right? It's not that complicated. And so we want to help you. And so some of you, you've been dragging your feet in next steps. Next steps, we've condensed into one day. It's happening today, right after this service. And some of you need to head out to the lobby today, go over to kids' check in if you have kids, and tell them, I want to keep my, my kids in ministry. We're going to take care of them another hour. You'll be done about 12, 15. We'll take you upstairs today. We're going to serve you pizza. We're going to take care of your kids. And we're going to tell you more about how to follow, grow, and live for Jesus. It's also our partnership process. You want to lock arms here, become a partner at Hope Church. It all happens through next steps. And so some of you today, your next step is simply next steps. For others of you, it's getting in a grow group. You see these beautiful green T-shirts that so many people are wearing today. And I just want to acknowledge that really, really fast because I'm a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. And I just love the fact that everybody is rocking their Kelly green today, the throwback to my birds, okay? And so... um, they're, they're, they're kind of easy to see today. Everybody in a, in a green shirt leads a grow group. And grow groups are our small group structure here at Hope Church to help you connect and grow in your relationship with Jesus. We've eliminated every excuse because we offer groups for every season of life. Whether you're a young adult, whether you're single, whether you're a married couple, whether you want men's groups or women groups, whether you want a workout group. I mean, we got a group for everything under the sun. Over 30 groups available today. Groups kick off next week for you to get connected to. So out in our courtyard today, you can go out there, connect, learn more about Grow Groups. Online today, you can go to Grow Groups. You can search all the Grow Groups we have available online. It's time for some of us to engage with other people and get involved in a Grow Group. We have Grow Groups that are centered around a curriculum called Freedom. And I've said this many times, I think that every follower of Jesus at some point should go through a Freedom Group because it will give you the tools that you need to live this life of freedom that many of us aren't even aware that what we're living into. So many of us are in bondage and slavery to our past and sins and mistakes and failures, and then freedom will help you begin to walk away from some of that. Again, to have the tools to walk away from some of that. So some of you, you want to begin in freedom. Some of you, maybe God's going to lead you to a financial peace university group. We have one of those as well. You can't miss it because there's a bunch of balloons out there that say peace with a big dollar sign. Uh, Pastor Doug uh, just tried to one-up everybody today. And we are giving away, as a resource here, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. In fact, anybody and everyone that you know can go to our website and sign up to go through Financial Peace for free. That's $100 if you purchase that on your own, that we're giving that as a gift to you. On top of that, you can jump into one of the groups this year and maybe begin to get some peace in your finances. I don't know what it looks like for you, but it's time for you maybe to take a next step. Maybe your next step is baptism. The last Sunday of this month, which I believe is September 24th, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., we're going to have baptisms. Baptism is our way to tell the world we belong to Jesus. It's kind of our coming out part. And we're not saying we're perfect or sinless. We're just telling the world, I've chosen to commit my life to Jesus. And then we already have 10 people who are signed up to tell the world they belong to Jesus that day. You could be part of that amazing celebration. We'd love for you to be part of it. I don't know if you have a student today. Maybe you have a student. Student Hope kicks off tonight, uh, right here back at Hope Church from 6 to 7.30. So if you have a student, uh, 7th grade through 12th grade, I would encourage you to get them back here. Hope Kids, it's a great time to get your kids in a consistent environment of learning about the things of God. We do that at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock every single hour. We don't babysit kids. We teach kids about Jesus, right? We also have a 5-6 program for 5th graders and 6th graders that happens every single week at 11 o'clock. We have literally every opportunity under the sun for you to get connected this year. So why don't you turn to somebody right now and say, what's your next step? Come on, turn to somebody else. What's your next step? Because there's always a next step. Anytime you're walking spiritually in your relationship with God, you arrive to one place, 
We don't just get there and we don't just camp out. We don't talk about the steps we took years ago and 10 years ago and 20 years ago and how we were once involved and we once did all these things. We are always progressing. We are always growing. We never stop following. We never stop growing. We never stop living. It's a lifelong commitment. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that our mission as Jesus followers is to become sitters and attenders. You understand that, right? Nowhere does it call us to be consumers. It says that we follow and that we grow and that we live. And you say, well, Tad, if I'm just a consumer and a tender, does that mean that I'm not living into the full calling of what it means to be a follower of Jesus? And I'd say, you're exactly right. It's exactly what I mean. And that's what the Bible lays out for us. In November, we're gonna celebrate 10 years of hope. How awesome is that gonna be? 10 years of hope, church. It's hard to believe it's already been 10 years of doing whatever it takes for all people to follow Jesus, grow with Jesus, and live for Jesus. And we're not backing down from that mission. But in our next 10 years, what we want to do is we want to continue to help people follow, grow, and live for Jesus. But under that live piece, we really want to be known in the next 10 years of branching out from that live piece. And we want to help people be equipped and developed to be sent out into the world to make a difference for the cause of Christ. This is what we want to do as a church. We want to be a disciple-making church. Again, what do you mean by a disciple-making church? We want to be Jesus followers who go out into our world and the world and make other Jesus followers. And we believe that disciple-making begins in the home. We believe it begins with parents. It doesn't just happen at church or with a Christian school. It begins in your home. So we want to help equip and develop parents to be able to disciple in their homes. We want to equip and develop you, wherever that is for you, on your college campus, in your cubicle, in your everyday life, and in your home, to be equipped to be a disciple-maker, to understand you have a divine calling on your life, and that calling is for you to be sent out into this world to make a difference for Jesus Christ. That's why you were put on this earth. We want you to live into that. Again, church is important. In fact, I believe church is so vital to our lives. In fact, I believe the entire almost New Testament is written to us believers to tell us how important the church is, to be built up to be edified, to have a group of people that we're growing with and doing life with, but it's also you and I can have a family who we can lean into so we can get out into the world and we can make a difference for Jesus. This is the mission of the church, and this is the truth. We'll talk a lot about this today. You and I, we can be in the church and not in Christ Jesus. Do y'all hear what I'm saying right now? We can be in church and not be in Jesus. Sadly, there are going to be a lot of people who spend a lot of days in church, but they've never been in Jesus. You can come to church, check all the boxes, do all the things the church serves up as opportunities, and still miss Jesus. So what do we want to do? We don't want to get caught up in just doing things. We want to be people who follow Jesus. We've said not a pastor, not a denomination, not a group of people. We want to follow Jesus. We want to grow in our relationship with Jesus, and we do that by growing personally, and we grow corporately with other people. And how do we do that? We live out Jesus in our lives. We are Jesus to everyone we come in contact with. So that really is what this teaching series that we're jumping into is all about, this battle-ready teaching series. It's all about God in his grace giving us everything that you and I need to fight this battle of life. Everything we need to advance God's mission on this earth. Everything that he's given us to stand strong and to fight against our spiritual enemy and to come out victorious, to win in our marriages, to win in our parenting relationships, to win in our earthly relationships, and to win in this thing called life. You know that you and I were not created to just survive. You know that, right? We weren't created to just survive, to barely hold on. We were created to thrive. My family just started school this, this past week. Some of you will, will start kind of the, the journey tomorrow, right? ABSS got a three-hour delay, and we'll finally get into like the routine beginning on Tuesday. But my family began that this past Tuesday. And I say my family because all four of my kids started school, and my wife Becky teaches kindergarten. So they all started school last week. And so all six of us were forced on Tuesday morning into the routine that doesn't come natural after the summer, right? And so what was our first thought is, oh, man, if we could just make it a Friday. We could just get through the week. You ever do this before? We could just make it through, right? 
And this is kind of how we fall victim in life. We start getting into this mentality, if I can just hold on and survive, if I can just make it to the summer, if we can just make it to the weekend, if I can just make it through another day, if I can just make it through this marriage, if I can just make it through that time with the kids. We get into this idea of just surviving, but what we forget is that God has called for us to thrive, to not feel like we're just holding on and begging for life, but to actually experience life, to advance his kingdom and not ours, to push back the enemy, listen to me, to take the ground the enemy has stolen from you and the people that you love and claim the victory that's not found in yourself, but the victory that's already found in Christ Jesus because he's already won the victory over your life. This isn't some self-help series where you just dig deeper in yourself and find the me-centric gospel that the world tells us. Just dig a little deeper, find more of yourself, just get up every day and win the battle within you. No, 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 no. This is about you and I understanding that Jesus Christ has already won the battle. And it's surrendering ourselves over to him in a battle, no matter what battle we face, realizing that he is greater and stronger than whatever we're gonna face. We're gonna really center this teaching series around a key passage in Ephesians chapter six, much like we did if you were journeying with us in the book of Galatians, we centered the whole series around Galatians chapter five, verse 22 and 23. We're gonna center this teaching series around Ephesians chapter six, six verses 10 through 17. And so here's what I wanna encourage you to do right now. I wanna encourage you, I say this every week, but I wanna encourage you, if you got a Bible, get a Bible out right now. You say, I don't have a Bible with you. Yes, you do, because you have your phone with you. And so I want you to go ahead and get the Bible app on your phone. Why don't you put your phone on airplane mode so you're not tempted to jump into any social media apps or look at anything else and just get the Bible out. You can take some notes right there, open up a note on your phone, grab an ink pen, grab some notes because we're gonna journey together. Some of y'all staring at me. I'm talking to you right now. Like, let's, let's go, right? We're gonna talk about this passage every single week because I want it to be ingrained within your heart and your soul. In fact, I would encourage you every day for the next six weeks, if you don't read anything, to read this passage, meditate on it, pray about it. Let's jump into it. It says this in Ephesians chapter six, beginning of verse 10. It says, finally, be strong in the who? In the Lord. And in the strength of whose might? So I want to remind all of us, we're not here talking about you developing a, a greater muscle within yourself, and developing more strength within yourself. It says that we're going to be strong in the Lord. Where does our strength come from? It comes from the Lord and the strength of his might. Verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil's schemes. There are some days all you're going to be able to do is stand. But notice it doesn't say in that moment you're gonna advance in that moment and it doesn't say you're gonna retreat. It says that sometimes there are seasons where something so great is gonna come against you but it says that in the strength of God you are not going to cower and run. You can have the strength to stand through the deepest and darkest moments of your life. And the moments that cause you fear the moments that break your heart of worry, instead of running and cowering and losing who you are and losing your footing, he says, I'll give you enough strength to just stand in the moment. Verse 12, for we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You have got to understand this. If you don't hear anything else I say today, you have got to understand you and I have a real spiritual enemy. Everything in this life is a spiritual battle. You have got to understand this. You can't just half-heartedly understand this. You have got to come to grips with this. You have a real enemy, and he is powerful, and he is crafty, and he is smart, and he is wise. He is not more powerful than God. He is not more crafty than God, but he's smart and wise. And left to yourself, he will defeat you. He will cause you to lose. And some of you know this because you're losing right now. And the problem is, for many of us, it's because we're fighting the wrong battle. Notice he says the battle is not a battle of flesh and blood. So for many of us today, the battle is not your spouse. Did you hear me right now? The battle is not your spouse. The battle is not your kids. The battle is not your kids. The battle is not your boss or your professor or your coach or anything you could fill in the blank. You have a real spiritual enemy. He's got one mission, and that's to take you out. 
to destroy you and he'll use anything that he can in his arsenal. He will get you to go against the people that God has placed in your life to discourage and defeat you. You know the marriage covenant God designed it. You know this, right? It wasn't our idea. God's a lot smarter than us. So when God puts together the marriage relationship, it was supposed to be two becoming one flesh as God being the centerpiece, as one unstoppable force against everything and everyone else. And sadly, most marriages don't operate that way. It's you versus him or her. And anytime you put you versus him or her, somebody's going to lose. That's not what God designed for marriage to be at all. You let your kids take advantage of you, and they're going to win that battle every single time. You let your kids be the centerpiece of your emotions and your attitude and your finances and your time and your calendar. And good things are going to rob you of God's very best, aren't they? You gotta realize the enemy will use anything he can, even the things that God's put in your life to distract and discourage you if he can. Verse 13 says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Do y'all hear this over and over again? Verse 14 says, stand therefore having tightly fastened the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on Put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we are given this arsenal of weapons to be used to fight this battle. It says the whole armor of God. Now, I got an illustration today that we're going to use throughout this series. Why don't you guys give it up for our, our stagehand today, Dave, as he brings out just a, just a little small illustration that we're going to reference throughout this teaching series. Y'all give it up for Dave, man. You're the man, Dave. We appreciate you, man. So a few weeks ago, the staff came to me and they said, Tad, we need to make a mold of your body. And I, and I had no idea <laughs> what was going on. They said, Tad, we just need you. And I said, guys, okay, and, and surprisingly, the camera just plays tricks on you. This is how big I am in real life. And um, let me show you how just um, God has a way of, of humbling you. I've been working on a project in my house for like the last two years because I'm like everybody else, I'm busy, and I was painting some cabinets. I was probably just trying to finish up th this whole deal. And so a few weeks ago, I walked into a paint store here in town, and uh, uh, there was a guy that goes here, uh, and we were talking before I even entered the door. We were, we were kind of yelling back and forth to each other. And there was a guy at the counter, he was checking out, and, and as I, I walked in the door, I barely get two feet in the door, he turns around and he says, hey, preach. And I was like, he goes, I, I recognize you. And I was like, okay. And he says, I watch you on YouTube. And I said, oh, okay, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. He goes, no, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. And so I go walk up to him to shake his hand, and as I go to shake his hand, I put my hand out, and he goes, wow, I thought you'd be a lot bigger in person. <laughs> Now, he's a big guy, but still, man, humility, man, humility. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, man. Anyways. This is the visual, though, that I want, I want you just to have for just a moment. Like, when Paul paints this picture, just to kind of bring all of us into focus, I need you to understand, like, this guy doesn't look like he's showing up to half-heartedly tiptoe into a battle. He looks for real, doesn't he? And you got to understand, this is how serious the battle is. Like, you and I, we hear this, and it's like, okay, okay, yeah, it's a battle. So I'll wake up today, I'll throw up my little 30-second prayer, I'll read a scripture verse, and I'll just go about my day, and whatever happens, happens. And I'm like, would you approach a real battle that way? If we took you today, I want you to visualize for a moment and put you on the front line over in Ukraine or Russia in the war, would you just kind of half-heartedly be like, what's the game plan? Okay, put me on the front line, whatever I got, let's go, let's go, let's do this. And if you're on the front line and you're in the trench and you're looking over and people are dressed like this and you're dressed like this, you'd be like, how do I get that? How do I get one of those? You're telling me I could have that? And you're like, yeah, there's a manual that laid it out for you. You just had to pick up the armor and get prepared. You could have been prepared for battle, but you chose today just to tiptoe into a war and your enemy came fully prepared to take you out and you walked in acting like you had no idea that there was an enemy who's coming to destroy you. You say, Tad, this sounds serious. It's that serious. 
You're in a spiritual battle every moment of every single day. And God in his grace has given you everything you need to stand your ground and to not lose the battle. And how many of us will choose on a daily basis to not come prepared for battle, to not come prepared for war? So we have this visual of this full armor that we want to really begin to drive home. And you're going to see him every week of this series to serve as a reminder of what God has given every one of us to walk into this battle. Let's begin with the first piece of armor today in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. He says, stand therefore, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. The belt of truth. This is the first piece of armor that Paul lays out for us. And I think it's the most important piece. And I think we'll establish that together today. And when I think about that belt being firmly fastened, I think about Aaron Rodgers and the discount double check. Y'all remember that back in the day? Y'all remember this? Aaron Rodgers was a quarterback for the Packers. He'll start his new journey with the, the Jets tomorrow night against the Bills. But he would score a touchdown. He would run out and he would pow, put on the belt, right? Y'all remember this? Nobody else remember this? And because of that, they ended up making a commercial out of it. He had like the discount double check. Okay, some of y'all just need to get out. Whatever. So I think about this belt being such an important piece. Is anybody else a belt wearer? Anybody else a belt wearer? Anybody else like me, you can't function without a belt? Like, I, I, if, I have, if I have pants that are made for a belt and I don't have a belt on, I feel naked. Anybody else feel this way? I, I don't feel like I'm uh, properly equipped. I, I don't feel, like, I, literally, it, it affects me. It affects me. Like, like, Sundays I get here really early, and so most of the time I don't wear what I, what I wear out here because I get here early. Like, days like today, it's raining and pouring. I leave in my house, and I've been known to spill some coffee on myself or something crazy like that. And so I kind of wait, but there's been Sundays when I have forgotten my belt, and I've gotten in my truck, drove all the way back home to get my belt because I don't feel like I'm fully dressed. I feel like I'm lacking confidence. In fact, a few weeks ago, this is a true story, I was up against the, the, the clock. I didn't have time to go home. I forgot my belt. So I ran into the costume closet here for Hope Kids. <laughs> and I stole a belt off of one of the costumes because I just felt like I couldn't go out and not have my belt on, right? Because the belt just being firmly fastened there's something about it that just kind of gives you some boldness. And this is what Paul's beginning to reference, this belt of truth. Now, this word truth that he refers to literally means this. You can write this down. That which is true, that which is true in accordance with fact or reality. You know, in our culture, we're told there's no absolute truth, which is absolutely impossible. There has to be absolute truth because truth is based in facts and reality. We live in a culture today that has lost sight that there is actual facts and there's actual reality, right? We don't get to change the definitions of truth based on emotions. We don't get to redefine reality based on how we feel. I don't know, again, what society, culture, professors have taught you, but our feelings do not trump facts, they don't. They don't redefine reality. See, there is the truth, not a truth. And it's important for you and I to know what the truth is because knowing the truth is what re leads us to the life that the Bible talks about. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me, you can say this today, to know the truth is to know Jesus and to know his word. You have to wrestle with today, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus? What is God's word? Is God's word, in fact, truth? And if it is truth, if it is factual, if it is reality, then I have to live and stand on that truth. In Ephesians 6, Paul places truth as the belt. Now, during Paul's day, a belt for a soldier was more of an undergarment. What would happen is the belt allowed him to tie up his, his garment. It allowed him to move freely, unimpeded in life. John Stott says this way. He says, the belt gathered the warrior's tunic together, and it also is what held his sword. It ensured that he was unimpeded when he was marching, 
As he buckled it on, it gave him a sense of hidden strength and confidence. See, truth is a hidden strength. It's not something that we wear externally, but it's something that we have tucked away internally. It's necessary. It's what gives us the boldness. In a world today, when we don't know what truth is, when the world is sifting through what is truth, what is reality, we have this boldness, this strength, because we have God's truth. So you, you can write this down. The belt of truth was designed so that you and I can fight unimpeded. The belt of truth was designed so that you and I could fight the battle of life unimpeded, meaning not obstructed, not hindered, free. So Paul's saying that the truth is necessary for us to live life unhindered, unimpeded. Without the truth, listen to me, hold on, we'll get tripped up. Without the truth, we'll get lost. Without the truth, we'll lose focus. Without the truth, we'll start fighting the wrong battles and advancing the wrong agenda. Do y'all hear me right now? Without the truth, we'll get lost. We'll live for the wrong purpose. We won't fight the right battles. So let me ask you a question today. What's tripping you up? What's tripping you up? I might say it this way. Stop tripping. Why are you tripping, dog? Why are you tripping? Why, why are you tripping through life? Why are you struggling so bad? So often the reason why we're tripping is because we don't have truth. You know what some of us are tripping on today? We're tripping on our past. I understand that. I'm constantly plagued by my past. For so many days, this, this is a true story, God honest truth, this morning. I was just telling this to Sandy just a little bit ago. I was sitting down, I get up on Sunday mornings, I kind of have a routine, I'm drinking my coffee, I'm sitting at the bar, I'm doing my quiet time before I start looking at my notes. I'm, I'm a Jesus follower before I'm a pastor, a preacher, and so I'm just in God's word, spending some time alone, just praying out to God. And I just feel like in my spirit, all, all of my boldness is just gone. This is where I'm at this morning. And I'm just struggling. I'm sitting in the moment, I'm just there. It's Sunday, I'm never more vulnerable. The enemy is out to get me, and I'm just in, I feel weak. I feel vulnerable. I, this year, I've come face to face. This whole past year, I'm coming up on a year of just having to face some of the darkness of my past. And I'm just walking through all of that, and I'm feeling beat up. I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling guilt. I'm crying out to God. I'm just saying, God, I need your boldness today. And as I'm sitting there this morning, a text message comes through in the middle of my prayer from a guy here at our church. He says, Tad, I'm currently doing my quiet time, and the Holy Spirit just stopped me and said, I need to pray for you. And he sent me the longest text message in the world to refute everything that I was sitting there battling with. You think that's by chance? You think that's by chance? I'm not telling you a pastor story. This is really true. This really happened to me this morning today, right? And so I, I know what it's like to go through life and feel like I'm tripping on my past, but the truth is my past does not define me and your past doesn't either. But the enemy has got so many of us convinced that God can and God won't and God won't use you. Is it an addiction that you've believed you'll never get over? So you're tripping on this addiction of whatever it is, fill in the blank. That's not the truth. And in your power, you'll probably never get over it. But in God's strength, in God's power, in the power of the Holy Spirit, you can have victory. It may not seem possible to you right now. You're tripping on a marriage that just seems to be dead in after dead in after dead in. And you're believing we'll never have peace, we'll never have wholeness, we'll never have what God designed. That's not the truth. The enemy wants you to believe that. He wants you to believe it's hopeless. He wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you to walk away. He wants you to, to give up on it. Is it a kid and you've given up faith, believing that kid, that teenager, that college student will ever give your life to Jesus and you're so discouraged? Is it the world? Is it the economy? Is it politics? Is it fear? Is it health? You know, we have an enemy who every day wakes up and he just plants little landmines in your life. And he's got one mission, and that's just what can, I, what can I distract you with today? What can I discourage you with? What can I defeat you with? What can I hold you down with? What can I blow up in your life just to keep you from living into all that God has for you today? And so every day I got to choose, am I gonna be tripping through the day? Am I gonna begin with God's truth? Will I run to the world for a truth or will I run to the source of the truth which is found in Jesus? 
which is found in the word of God? Will I listen to the world or will I listen to God's spirit? See, we are so quick to scroll to try to find some version of truth. We'll scroll social media, we'll scroll, we'll scroll through the, the news, we'll, we'll, we'll listen to podcasts, we'll cling to emotions and opinions, we'll cling to political warriors to give us some version of truth. And the only way that we can know truth is to spend time tightly fastened to God's truth. We gotta be people who are full of truth, who are full of God's word, and who are full of God's spirit. We tend to be people who are full of culture, full of the world, and we're empty on God's promises. There are many of us who have a high education level in the world's education and politics and government and business. We have a very small education when it comes to God's truth. We have to ask ourselves, what are we feeding into our souls every day? How are we prepping ourselves for the battle that you and I face? Paul lays out for us some truth today that we got to stay tightly fastened to. Back up from Ephesians 6 and Ephesians 1 and watch what Paul says. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Watch how many times we see this theme of being in Christ. In verse four, it says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Verse seven, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set out for us in Christ Jesus. Verse 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Paul unpacks a bunch right there. He says that you and I are blessed because of Jesus. Because in Jesus, God brought all of heaven's blessings down to us. He reminds us that before we were ever formed on this earth, God knew us before he even formed this earth. I need you to hear me right now. God had a plan for your life before your parents ever had a plan for your life. Before you ever had a plan for your life. And God's plan for your life was to purchase you back from a life of sin. God knew that every single one of us would be born into a sin nature. We would be sinners by nature. And so God wanted to purchase you and I back because you and I would never be sinless. We would never be perfect. We would never be holy. We would never be righteous. We could never be in right standing with God on our own. So God, in his grace and mercy, sent Jesus on a rescue mission to redeem us, to restore us, to rescue us from our sin nature. And Jesus, by shedding his blood for us, by being the ultimate sacrifice for us, purchased us back to God. This is what God wanted for us. And what he wants you to know is that you and I will never be able to understand his will. He wants you to know this truth. You will never know why you were put on this earth until you first understand what God has done for you. That you're forgiven. And that God has a plan for you. The first three chapters of Ephesians is Paul reminding you who you are in Christ Jesus. You are a son and daughter. You have been adopted into God's family. You belong to him. He cares about you. He's done everything to prove to you just how much he loves you. God is not eternally angry at you. God loves you right where you are. He's done everything to prove that great love to you. He says at some point in your life, maybe today, you heard that truth. You heard the gospel of what God did for you through Jesus Christ. He says, and then you chose not just to believe in your head, but you chose to surrender your life, to turn from a life of sin, and to turn to God. That's the act of you and I confessing of our sins, of coming honest and clean about our sin nature, and turning to him. That's what repentance is, and choosing to live a life in him. He says, in that moment, he seals us. This is so huge. He says your spiritual inheritance is God sealing you, and how does he seal you up? With his spirit. 
It says in that moment, he places the spirit of the living God inside of you. And the spirit of the living God inside of you is what gives you the armor to be able to fight the battle in life. It is your spiritual inheritance. It is the promised fulfillment of God that he would come and reside inside of you and that's only made possible through Jesus, because of Jesus, in Jesus. You and I were designed in this life to find our breath and purpose in God and God alone. If you go back to Genesis, Joshua referenced this last week. You and I, Adam and Eve, created in the image of God. But Adam remained lifeless until God breathed life into him. You know what that means? It means that you and I were never meant to live a moment of our life without the breath of God inside of us. So you know what happens when you and I aren't living our life empowered by God's breath, by God's spirit? We're like fish out of water. We're walking around. Desperate for the world to offer you life and purpose and meaning and value that it cannot offer you. And some of us on the outside don't even realize that we look like desperate fish who are literally drowning in the world, desperate because we're not clinging to truth. We don't have the oxygen of God's breath coursing through our veins. See, the assurance of salvation, how do we know that we're followers of Jesus, is directly tied to the truth of the gospel that has lived out in our lives. John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36 says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in me, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham. And have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say we will become free? Now remember the Jews were considered God's chosen people. The response to Jesus is said, hey, we belong to God. We'll always belong to God. How can you tell us we're slaves to anyone or anything? And Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. And he says this, the slave does not remain in the house forever. Only the son remains forever. Verse 36, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Let me tell you how this breaks down in our culture. Many of us say, well, you know what? I'm a Christian, why? Because my grandma was a Christian. Well, I'm a follower of Jesus, why? Because I go to church at Christmas and Easter. And that sets me apart, that marks me, that makes me different. This is what the Jews were saying, and Jesus is like, no, 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 no. You need to understand, you can be in church and not be in Christ Jesus. You got to know who I am, and I just know who I am. You got to commit your life to me. You got to surrender who you are, your will, and your strength over to my truth. The freedom that you're longing for is only ever really found in me and me alone. Until I know that truth, my life will always be marked by sin, defeated and discouraged and set back by my past, by fear and anxiety. Until I really understand the life that God has called for me to live, then I will continue to be marked by things in this life that are trying to take life away, an enemy who's trying to rip and shred what God wants to create ultimately in my life. Again, it's why we talk so much about freedom groups, giving you the, the weapons in your arsenal to really understand what it means to live a life of freedom. The gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus himself, the apostle Paul, Jesus' brother James, they all tell us in the writings that the truth of Jesus is not defined by simply believing in Jesus, but rather living out his truth with our lives. There are a lot of people, again, who believe in Jesus. You know that in our world today, that about 74% of all Americans call themselves Christians. That's three out of every four people that you know. And again, when you ask them, what does it mean to be a Christian, they'll tell you things like, well, I've just always been a Christian. Well, I always ask this question. It's like if you were to ask me about my marriage and I said to you, well, you say, when's your wedding day? I'd say, well, I've just always been married. You say, well, that's not possible. Like there was a day, there was a moment. You, you stood before God and man. You committed your life to Becky. You, you swore an oath. You took an honor. You committed to her. There was a moment in time when you said, girls, I'm sorry. I'm off the mark. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to leave all you behind. I, I'm going to commit to one. You know what I'm saying? Like you made a conscious decision to surrender and commit to her. So I'd say the same thing in relationship with Jesus. When's the moment that all of it came together and you had perfect clarity 
and you saw the truth for what it was, and you said, I'm no longer living defined by my truth. I want to live my life based on, on God's truth, God's truth. To be a Jesus follower, we have to know the truth. We have to actually live the truth out. We have to do what it says, not out of obligation. We've been talking all about this in Romans and in Galatians, not out of religious activity, but because we know the truth that Jesus' way is better than our way. And it came to model it for us. Again, here at Hope Church, we say the disciple of Jesus is someone who is following Jesus, growing with Jesus, and living for Jesus, and you never graduate out of being a disciple of Jesus. I don't care how old you are, you continue to follow. You continue to grow. And you continue to live your life for Jesus. Paul says the only way that you and I can be battle ready, the only way we can stand firm daily is to know Jesus and stand on his truth. And we're given the Holy Spirit to know that truth. It says in John 16, verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. See, I can know and discern truth only because of the Holy Spirit. And he is the one who provides me the armor for life's battles. I can't live standing on the truth when I continue to look to the world, to look to social media, to look to wealth and positions and sex and careers and people and education to define truth. I can't look at the world to define my identity and my sexuality and my body. I can't keep looking for my version of truth. Can I just be gut level honest with you today? Can I just tell you this? There is no my truth. I just need you to understand that today. There is no my truth. My truth is a direct assault on the gospel of God's truth. My truth is a rejection of God's truth. My truth means I don't trust in God's truth. I trust in me, my version of the truth, how I feel about it. That is at its core, is completely contrary to the gospel. The gospel is about you and I having faith and trust to depend on God's truth over our version of truth. He becomes my source of truth. Last week, Joshua set up this teaching series by telling us the truth. The truth is that we were created in the image of God to bring glory and honor to God. What's the truth about you? You were created by God for your life to have one purpose, and that was to bring glory and honor to God. That means everything you have belongs to God. Do you hear me? He is your creator, your sustainer, your maker. So let me just be very honest with you. There is no such thing in the Christian world from my body, my choice. I just need to tell you that right now. I'm not being offensive when I say that. Because that statement in itself is contrary to the gospel. My body belongs to God. In fact, the Bible says as a follower of Jesus that my body is a temple that houses the spirit of God. So my body exists for one purpose, and that's to house the spirit of God to bring him glory and honor in all that I say and all that I do because I am created in the image of God to bring glory back to the sustainer of life. That means every day the truth is this. When I wake up, I have the God of the universe, the sustainer of life, living inside of me. What can my enemy throw at me? That the God of the universe is not greater than. What are you facing in this life that seems so great for God? What are you facing in this life that continues to allow you to lose your footing over and over and over and over again? I want to close here today because I think Today's a great opportunity for us in this fall kickoff to, to really set our feet on a solid foundation and say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of losing ground. I'm tired of not allowing my life to be fastened tightly to the truth of God's word. Maybe, maybe you're a Jesus follower today, you're a Jesus follower, and you keep losing ground in your marriage, in your home, with your kids, and your finances, in life, and your relationships. And maybe what you want to do today is in this moment is you want to say, I want to, I want to mark today as a day that I want to begin kind of a new path, a new journey. I want my, my life to be marked by the truth of God's word. I want to draw a line in the sand and say that I, I'm tired of, of, of losing ground to my spiritual enemy. And I want to go on the offensive. I want to realize that I'm in a spiritual battle and that God has given me every tool that I need to stop losing ground, but to advance towards what God ultimately wants. In just a moment, we're going, we're going to sing another song. And, and we offer this opportunity every week. But around our room today, we have 
some blue t-shirts and they're our prayer team and they've been praying for you today and long before you got here whether you utilize them or not they're going to pray for you and you're like I don't want prayer don't come to Hope Church because we're going to pray for you it's going to get really crazy here like we're going to pray for your needs and your wants and your desires we're going to pray over you spiritually and so they pray all morning for a spiritual protection over you because they realize that there's a spiritual battle as we're talking there are things going through your head your mind your heart your shoulder praying over you and so maybe for you today even as a follower of Jesus you're going to step out today maybe go during, during the song and grab one of them and just say hey I'm ready to just fast and tightly to God's truth this year in my home, my life, my kids my marriage, my relationships, my school, whatever it might be, I just, I just, I'm just tired of losing this battle will you just pray with me today now, I'm going to encourage you, don't just hear those words, I'm going to encourage you to move I'm going to encourage you to do something in just a moment maybe you're here today and you've heard the truth maybe for the first time or maybe many times maybe for the first time God's truth is overwhelming you and what you're saying is in this moment is that I want to cling to God's truth I want to give my life to God I want to surrender to him. I want to turn from my life of sin. I want to turn from my version of truth. I want to turn from what I'm trying to stand on because I realize it's a shaky ground. And it hasn't gotten me anywhere. I realize that I'm a sinner and I need God. And I don't have to look for him because God's already done everything to get to me. He's available today. He sent Jesus for me and I want to surrender my life to him. And I want to cling to that belt of truth today. I'm going to encourage you maybe to step out, just grab one of our prayer teams and just say, hey, will you pray with me today? I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to ask you, don't ask everybody to stand up for just a moment. And we're going to spend some time together just in this last song, just reflecting. And I want this to be just kind of a mode of prayer for just a moment for you personally. Whether you move or not, my prayer is that you would begin to analyze your heart because these words of this song are so powerful. It's where we left off in worship we're going to circle back around to today. Say, God, I give you my heart. Do you mean that today? Like, God, my heart is yours. I'm willing to give you everything. I'm willing to surrender it to you. So right now as we sing, I want to know if that's real for you. Have you given him your heart today? If not, choose right now in this moment to give him your heart today. If you want to surrender to his truth today, just step out. Somebody will grab you. Somebody will pray with you. Let's pray together, God, in this moment, God, wherever we find ourselves. God, I pray we'll be people today who will surrender to your truth, your truth over our own. God, in a world that's so anxious to know what truth is, God, we have a truth. We have the truth. We have the life found in Jesus Christ. God, thank you for Jesus. The truth is that he loves us with a love that we can't comprehend and understand. And he left heaven and came to earth to meet us right where we are at our greatest point of need. The truth is, is that through the Holy Spirit, God, through a relationship with Jesus, you've given us the Holy Spirit who's equipped us for the battle ahead. God, may we not spend another moment losing any ground to our enemy. May we wake up every day fully engaged in battle, ready to fight, ready to stand on your truth. God, work in our lives today. God, meet us at a place of need today. God, we surrender it all to you today. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you gain something from this content, that it helps you to follow, to grow, and to live for Jesus. We drop new content just like this every Monday morning, so we want to invite you back. And the best way to do that is to follow, like, and subscribe on whatever platform you're watching to stay connected to everything we have going on here at Hope Church.